driving in checking for horned lizards and we just spotted one. So hopefully we can sneak up on it. Dan's already in front of us. So we're gonna get under this fence. And now we're gonna see if we can catch him. He went into this little grass area here. Come on, Viagor. All right, boys. Looks like a healthy one. Oh, here he is, here he is. Is he there? Yes. Yeah. Hang on, let me, let me film this. Okay, we have eyes on this guy. One of us on either side of the fence. You got him? I got him. They're pretty slow. Yeah, they are not that fast. Oh, that was a, a yellow one. one. Nice. Here, can you? Yep. Good job. Sweet. Beautiful. There it is. Phytosoma cornutum. Phytosoma cornutum. Texas horned lizard. More affectionately known as the horny toad. Sweet. Okay, let's, uh, let's move it over here for filming. Okay, everyone, so we have finally found our intensely sought after Texas horned lizard. Look at this guy. I know. Beautiful, beautiful, large, healthy, chunky specimen. Now we're doing our best to handle with care. We don't want to stress these guys out. These are beautiful, beautiful lizards, and there is a very healthy population out here uh, where we are filming. We are currently in Atascosa County, which is one of the strongholds of this species in Texas. Now what's really, really sad about these lizards is that a lot of their population has been destroyed. And that's partly in due, uh, partly due, excuse me, to, your phone's going off. Now what's really, really sad about these lizards in particular is that their range has declined greatly in Texas. Really and that, dramatically. very, very dramatically. And that is due to a lot of agricultural development. So a lot of fields, a lot of good, just raw habitat that was cleared for agriculture. And of course, the invasive red imported fire ant has really been detrimental to the population of their main food source, Pogana myrmex barbatus, or the red harvester ant, which is actually a nest that we're standing over right now. There's a little worker right there. And I have some B-roll I can include right now uh, so, of those uh, beautiful ants. So the only places you're able to find this species anymore are uh, ideal habitat like this that's still left or that has recovered since these guys had their, their dramatic decline. Now the scientific name, Phrynosoma cornutum, uh, refers to these horns here. Uh, cornutum uh, essentially means crown. And you can see that, that if you can get up on the face there, that crown of horns that come around that beautiful lizard's head. And that is to both uh, defend the lizard, making it hard to swallow. They can also stab with those if they're picked up. Uh, but it also helps break up their shape. Oftentimes they will simply rest on the ground. Oh, <laughs> you can see we've got to waddle off. Come here. Easy, easy. There we go. They'll sit on the ground on these uh, 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 Pogana Myrmex barbatus, the harvester ant nests, and they'll just sit there. And they'll wait for the ants to come right by, like that ant there. Oh, easy. But these are very, very cool species to see. Not a very common species no. anymore, even though they were once widespread throughout the entirety of Texas. If you were around in the 1950s, 60s, uh, maybe even into the 70s, you would have seen these little guys everywhere, uh, all over the place. They used to be a super common sight. Kids everywhere used to catch them. Uh, they used you know, to be sold at roadside shops and all sorts be, of things. There would be dozens and dozens of them everywhere, all over Texas, most of it. Sadly, as Jack has said, their range has declined dramatically, but uh, luckily, as you know, uh, there are destructive humans, there are also humans working to make change for the better. Uh, and so there are many zoos and facilities that actually breed these guys, have been studying intensely their diet uh, as both adults and juveniles in order to establish healthy populations in captivity that can re-establish the populations in the wild. Up to him. He is so cute. He's just kind of trying to figure out what's going on. I have one of these on my license plate. <laughs> it gives you any indication of how uh, widespread of a, a, an icon they are in our state. 
But yeah, look at this. You see that fat, stumpy body? That's where they get the name Horny Toad. All these horns, fat, stumpy body, toad, horn. You get the gist. <laughs> but very, very beautiful. There you go. Check out his little belly here. It's got That's some interesting black spots on there. Speckling. And you might be able to see if I, uh, if I mess with him a little bit. He's, he's trying to uh, push his... Hmm, no, he might not do that. He was trying to stick me with those horns earlier. Yeah. Now he's kind of figured out we're not trying to eat him. One of their defense mechanisms is to just jab those horns into whatever's trying to grab them. Goofy little guy, huh? <laughs> All right, so we're gonna let this one get on its way. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this little interchange. These are great little lizards. Um, one way you can help with uh, the horned lizard population is if you do have this particular species of ant in your yard, the Pogana Myrmex barbatus, please leave them be. This is the lifeblood of these beautiful, beautiful lizards. All right, so we'll let this one get out. Give back to munching on ants. There you go, little buddy. <laughs>